Hello everyone, my name is Cindy and this is Anika and welcome to the Home Automation X channel. Thank you for watching. It has been a while since we've done a video on robot vacuum. We get requests to do videos on all makes and models, but if they don't meet a certain criteria, we tell them no and that we can't do them. Yes, we can be tough. <laughs> and if you enjoy being entertained while learning about cool tech, then please subscribe to our channel, guys. Also click that bell icon to get notified because we do release new videos regularly. Also, please use our Amazon links if you do shop on Amazon. Now, those links are in every one of our videos and they really help us out. Finally, if you want to see our videos weeks before anyone else, see our Patreon link down below for all the details. So, we have been using the 360 2018 model for the past two years and now they sent us their 2020 robot vacuum. Now, this is amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, it talks too, which is nice. It has some feedback. <laughs> now, <Charging>. okay, <laughs> stop stealing the spotlight. <laughs> exactly. See, there's more than one voice. Are you hearing the voices too? <laughs> now the S5 model, which has added improvements, we actually like it because it can map out your entire floor and talk to you. Now this mapping will determine the most efficient cleaning routes instead of the random zigzag bumping into walls that you've seen in the so past. Annoying. <laughs> in fact, it can map out the floors, 10 floors in your home. Who has 10 floors? Okay, well soon, hopefully us. All right, yeah. Guys, let's, Woo. let's help us get there so we can film videos in our mansion. <laughs> yes. Another feature which a robot vacuum must have is the ability to set up virtual line boundaries or no-go zones to keep some of the areas in your home from being disturbed. Finally, it must have a strong suction, which does at 2200 PA. That's right. This product literally sucks. The docking station has two contact strips, as you can see here, ah, for charging the robot. Now, this has improved over other models where it charges underneath, like this one here. <laughs> now, you can also wrap the access power cable which is actually here, and you can put it right inside this part here to clean it up and create a tidier space. So you can actually lift the cover like Anika is showing us, and you can remove the dust bin. And the bin is 580. The dust bin has been removed. Apparently it's been removed. That's great to know. So our friendly helper here is letting us know in real time. Hey, I'm the friendly helper, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Anyways, yeah, there this you go. dustbin is full of her hair, just an <laughs> FYI, okay? I've been shedding. <laughs> yeah, with all this, all this over here? Yeah, okay. Just, yeah. just, okay, continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we have been using it. It's full of my hair, and it also comes with a HEPA filter, and it lets you know that it's back. It's actually smarter than the operator. Um, and the brush with knife snaps in for easy storage. Ooh. Ooh. Now it is to clean the vacuum and out of any hairs from people um, wrapped around the roller, which may or may not have happened in the making of this video. The reason it is important the robot vacuum must be smart is detailed in this time-lapse video. You can see how the robot creates the rooms as it maps out the floor, and it also is cleaning at the same time. If this didn't have the laser mapping, it would take much, much longer and wouldn't be as effective when cleaning. It would be zigzagging around and probably miss the old room because it is probably going to need a return to charge itself back up. So you can see it marks out the coffee and dining room tables and it is getting stuck in certain areas. I would see a no-go zone to avoid it next time around. The next time the robot cleans, after it has mapped out the floor, it is a little smarter and it will clearly know where the boundaries are and will start cleaning in a more efficient way. We don't have any carpet, but if the 360 S5 did detect carpet, it would adjust the suction of the vacuum from standard mode to powerful mode and then switch back down when on hardwood automatically. Now it took 67 minutes the first time to map out the entire floor. This time around, it mapped it out more smartly and only took 59 minutes.
Once your floor is mapped out, if you wish to split your living room into two zones, you can. Once the map is built, you can merge the two rooms into one or split one room into two separate zones. With zones, you can schedule cleaning um, of the living room, dining room, and kitchen at like 1 p.m., let's say, or you can do the bedroom and the baby while the baby is sleeping around that time, maybe. Now, we mentioned the 360S5 could map out multiple floors. It can remember up to 10 floor plans. And I want to see a house with 10 floors, wouldn't you? I mean, come on now. Our house. <laughs> we only needed to map two floors and the basement in this house until Time. we move Time to our 10 store. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> this is how the robot mapped it out, but we can make it more accurate. I can split the area here to divide the kitchen from the dining room. And I can also divide the living room to keep it separate from the dining room. Also, by clicking on the names, I can rename them more appropriately. I took some time to fix everything up properly. Now, I gave all the rooms a proper name, and I split the areas to accurately reflect where they are. Now, this is useful when creating schedules. Now, under the multi-story management, this is where you can select your floor if you move your vacuum around. We keep ours on the same floor, but you can save up to 10 maps at a time. We can create the schedules. Now, I have a schedule to clean the whole floor every Monday and Friday at noon. However, clicking on the plus, you can create another schedule if you wish. You can clean your own areas by dragging the box around or selecting the rooms by clicking each one. Now, you can choose to clean daily, every Monday to Friday, or even customize which days you want to clean. Now, one thing I will mention, which is important, is getting setting up your no-go zones. Now, from the main map, click on block off at the bottom. And you can move that red box around to the area you don't want to clean. And also adjust the size by dragging the corners. You can also set up a virtual wall easily by moving the line around and put it where you don't want the robot to clean. You can stretch the line until it fits where you want to put it. Now we have ours in quiet mode, which is the default setting. You can change the power by clicking on it. The maximum height the 360 S5 can transition over while cleaning is 2 centimeters or 0.8 inches. That is pretty high. As you can see, it has no issues traveling over our two mats. There are four power levels, and when it goes over carpet, it automatically increases the power level for deep cleaning. You can see that here on our sample piece of carpet we have, if you have a large house and the battery drains before it finishes cleaning, the robot will go back to recharge and then it'll continue cleaning where it left off from. The 360 S5 also works from Alexa and Google Home, which is great, but I will rely on my schedule to do the cleaning. In summary, this is a great robot vacuum. And like we said, we have been using their 2018 model for the past two years without any issues at all. This one is more powerful and the improvements in the software makes it an even better one. We put the link down below to get more information on this. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you found it useful, please do share it with someone. <laughs> you can see our latest videos right here on the side. Subscribe to see more videos, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and don't forget to check out our website, homeautomationx.com. Thank you for watching.